In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a sub five pound last ditch kit. This is your go to survival kit that should go with you everywhere. Stick around, it's going to be a good video. Welcome back to the channel. So we're going to be taking a look at a last ditch kit. At least that's what I'm calling it. And uh, what it is is basically a survival kit that is meant to be uh, kind of your last resort. But it is a kit that you can take everywhere with you. Everything from camping, hiking, in your vehicle, bushcrafting, whatever you do, whatever your activities are, you want something that's always going to be with you. That is always the issue. Uh, we get so busy in so many different activities that sometimes we forget to grab the stuff that we should be taking with us. Um, but if you have something that's just ready to go and always packed and always packed the same, um, at least it has some backup items. And especially if you're hiking and camping in more remote uh, wilderness areas, out west, uh, in the mountains, um, you know, here in central Ohio, not that big of a deal walking around the nature preserve, but if I happen to go out into bigger woods out in Pennsylvania or I go down south to Tennessee, some of the other places that I like to camp, having something with me at all times is crucial. And this pack is something that you can carry with you everywhere you go uh, because it is lightweight. Um, it's very uncumbersome, uh, but it has all the essentials, I think, that you need to get by. The, obviously, this is not a long-term survival kit. This is not something that is going to go, you're going to go camping with but it will help you get you through a one to two night, maybe longer stay in the wilderness until rescuers come to get you or find you. And that's what this is all about. It is just having the essentials with you. And as you know, with this channel, I do a lot of putting together kits and experimenting and showing you different things of how to put things together. Uh, that's what I like to do. It's interesting. Uh, my background in search and rescue, I think really kind of drives that. Um, Oh, we were always so focused on the kit that we carried and making sure we had the right uh, items with us. So having something like this, I think, uh, could be um, a game changer for a lot of people. So let's take a look at this in depth and then see what you guys think. So I think the fanny pack concept uh, makes a lot of sense in a lot of different ways because a fanny pack or waste bag is something that can be taken with you. It can be added to a larger backpack. You can actually hang it off of a larger bag. You can wear it even when you have a larger backpack. And the Maxpedition Proteus, um, I feel is probably one of the best designs uh, for waste bags that I've ever seen. It's been around for a very, very long time. It's been copied by a lot of different companies. Um, but the thing is, it's very modular. Uh, it has a lot of organization, it is very heavy duty, well built, um, and it has a little bit more volume than a standard, um, you know, hiking fanny pack that you see, but also it is not overly huge like some of the bigger lumbar packs like from Mountain Smith and, and things like that. So that makes it, I think, ideal for this application of a kit that is uh, grab and go, um, fairly lightweight, and can be used in conjunction with other gear and packs. Now the first thing on the outside of this bag is I want to have uh, my fixed blade knife because that is always such an excellent tool to have around. It's not always necessary, um, but having a fixed blade is just my comfort level. And this one is the new SE Silencio. Um, I've been experimenting with this a little bit. I took it out uh, about a month ago or so when camping with a buddy and kind of played with it there at camp. Um, very great knife. Uh, I love it. Um, it is a little bit smaller in the handle as far as length, so you have to be aware of that. Uh, this one, I believe, is A2 steel. Very cool knife. But this is, was my choice uh, for a knife that I can stick on the outside of this pack. 
I'm able to use this Blade Tech Tech Lock. Uh, the the belt loop that this came with wasn't suited for attaching to Molly, but this Blade Tech works pretty well. Um, also, I can take this off the pack. Easier said than done. Take this off the pack, and then now I can mount this on my belt and carry it with me. So pretty cool knife. We'll be doing more of a review on this later on the channel. So the Maxpedition Proteus has, of course, Molly on the front, so that gives you that ability to mount um, some different things like your knives. We have two side pockets. We have a grab handle that also acts as the compression straps for this bag. There is Molly attachment or Pals attachment on the back, so you could actually strap this to a larger backpack. But it also has pass-through pocket, so you can store the belt. And it has D-rings, so you can add a shoulder strap if you wish. So there's a lot of different ways you can carry this and use this, and that's why I like that kind of modular approach that gives me more options than just a standard run-of-the-mill, you know, fanny pack that you find at Dick's Sporting Goods or something. All right, so now we're going to get into this thing. Of course, when you're looking at bags like this, you are very limited on the amount of space you have, so you have to be very thoughtful, mindful of what you're going to put in it. Uh, number one priority is always going to be water. Water, water, water. Hydration is so important. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry a small collapsible platypus canteen. Um, there's a lot of different types of these on the market, so you can choose what you want. But what's nice about these is um, they're lightweight, they're flexible. You can put them into a cargo pocket pretty easily. Uh, you can put water treatment tabs in them if you wish. You can hook uh, several different types of water filtration systems to it, like Sawyer's or Aquamira's, uh, whatever you have or you like, but they're a very nice little uh, bag to have in your kit. Zip ties. Uh, zip ties are seem like kind of a weird item to have, but when you're starting to building, you know, building shelters and hanging uh, tarps or mylar blankets or whatever, uh, these can come in handy because they're so quick and easy to utilize. They just have a lot of uses, so there's no reason not to have a few of these in your pack. Then of course we're going to want some type of thermal regulation, something to protect us and keep us warm. This is a Mylar bivy bag. Um, I think the brand is Proforce or something like that. I've had this for a while, but I keep it in this heavy duty uh, Ziploc bag uh, to protect it and to keep it ready to go so it's, it's uh, not crinkly or deteriorating in any way, not getting rubbed by all the gear in my bag. So had this for a little while, never had to use it, thank goodness, but uh, it does uh, the job for sure. Next item, um, and this is such an important item, is some type of metal container. And of course, metal containers are for boiling water and for uh, cooking food. Um, so having something like this, I think, is a, a really great option. This is a very lightweight aluminum mess tin. Um, I got this off of Amazon. It's pretty no frills. It's very similar to the Trangia mess tins, but in a lighter weight package. And then I'm able to have a lot of my tools and things in here stored. So a good multi-tool. And this is the Leatherman Rebar. Um, I really like this particular multi-tool from Leatherman because it is so simple, lightweight. Uh, there's not a lot of, you know, unnecessary things on it. Uh, it has the basic tools that I need. We've got the serrated sheep's foot blade, which is great for cutting rope. We have, of course, our can opener, bottle opener combo, ton of tool. We have a Phillips head screwdriver, and then of course a wood saw. And then on this side, a knife. A 
an awl or reamer. Small screwdriver there, large screwdriver there. A really fantastic item to have on a multi-tool for woods use is a file because now you have the ability to sharpen things if you need to. You can actually sharpen your tools with this. And this one is still pretty stiff, but nice lightweight package. And of course a good nylon sheath that um, I can take this out of my kit and put it on my belt. Okay, we have our ferro rod. Pretty well used one right there. Of course, we all know what that's for. Fire bellows for getting that wet marginal wood going in a fire. Very useful tool. Our Bic lighter. Most people will choose 550 cord. Um, I will argue for lighter weight kits, bank line is probably a better option. It takes up less room. It is very, very strong. It's very useful. Um, if you're lashing uh, things together, it works incredibly well. Um, it's just a great um, lightweight cordage option. <clears throat> a couple of coffee packets so I can make some coffee for a mood pick-me-up. Um, hydration uh, additives. This is very similar to something like a Gatorade. This, you would add this to your water. Also helps with the flavor. Bouillon cubes to make a broth, get some quick energy. Soup packets. Uh, these are easily found in grocery stores. I put them in a lot of my kits. Um, they at least give you some calories. And of course, that warm uh, soup is always a great thing. It's a good pick-me-up or a mood enhancer. The wire saw, a very controversial item. And most people say these things don't work, but depending on which kind you get, they can be very effective. This one um, I got from my friends at Five Call Survival Supply. This is actually, I think, the saw that is included in a lot of the Air Force uh, or pilot survival kits. Um, I've used this before. I've shown it in use on some videos, and it does work. Um, it's not perfect, but is better than some of the cheap uh, Chinese uh, wire saws that you'll find in, find in the pre-made survival kits. And then water filtration, super important. Uh, we have some aqua tabs. These I believe only require like an hour to actually, uh, uh, you know, start um, decontaminating the water. So you put one tablet to, you know, 32 ounces of water into your bottle um, and then let that set, shake it up and then that kind of, um, and then that helps dec decontaminate the water. Now, one thing, that I want to have is I want to have some type of bag to do the decontamination. You don't want to do um, everything in the bag you're going to be drinking out of because you don't want any cross-contamination issues. So these whirl bags, which can be found on Amazon and other places, um, are always a good option because they take up very little room. You fill them up with your dirty water, you add your tab, and then close that uh, that roll top opening up and then let the the tablet do its job and now you have decontaminated water the only thing is that you want to do um, is you want to do some type of pre-filter you obviously don't want to add uh, silty dirty mucky water into this because you're still gonna have all that crap floating around so if you have a bandana uh, which you should be carrying on yourself anyway, uh, that would be a great way to pre-filter this, also running it through a coffee filter uh, beforehand. So there's a lot of different methods and things that you can add to the kit. Front pocket. Of course, first aid, always, always an important item. And in this kit, I have moleskin, I have my lip balm, I have a tick key, I have some Aleve, I have various bandages, band-aids, gauze, and then of course some pain reliever. So uh, build your own first aid kit, make it um, how you like it and with the items that you think you need and that you would utilize. 
course a whistle for signaling. A compass. This is a wrist compass that glows in the dark. So uh, shooting a bearing and keeping on a path and going the way you need to go. Item that a lot of people don't have, but I happen to have it. Marking my area or signaling. Uh, this is a reflective armband. So it's a 3M reflective material. So I can put that on me. That way if people are looking for me and I happen to be incapacitated or down or moving, they can, if they're flashing their lights at night, they can actually see me because this will reflect back to them. So kind of a passive uh, signaling device, I guess. And then of course, Gorilla Tape, always a useful item. Signal mirror. And then a small notebook and pencil and some different uh, survival cards. This is all from Essie. Uh, just some little quick reference cards. Nice little set. Get that from them. Okay, moving over to this side pocket. Headlamp, super important. I've shown this in many of the different kit videos I do. I always have some type of headlamp with me. One of my favorites and one of my go-tos is this Petzl E-Light. Um, it is such a great little compact uh, headlamp. It's even got a, an emergency strobe and red light. So, Cool little package, runs on some button cells, but they last a really super long time. And if you're not using this as your primary headlamp, um, you can have these in your kit for a good long time. I've had some of these, you know, over a year without really having any uh, issues with them and then having to change them. So, but always test your batteries occasionally, get on kind of a regular um, schedule for testing batteries on all your electronics. And then an item that may be unnecessary, but since I have it, um, I like to have it with me, and that is a fishing kit. Now this is started as the BCB survival fishing tin, um, but it was very lacking, and I've added a lot of things to mine, including a small bobber, um, some more baits, and mini zip ties so I can attach the line to a stick, um, some line there, of course this has got some jigs and some sinkers, um, a little bit of rubber bait there, and even though food's not a priority, if I'm going to be there for a while, um, fishing is probably the best bet to go with. Uh, trapping is not something you're going to be very successful with. Most people wouldn't be. Um, and around here, fishing is probably the best thing you can do because there are streams, lakes, ponds, creeks everywhere. You will run into one. On this side, I have a little fire kit. Now, the tin is going to be for making char material out in the field, but also at the same time, it's holding some items for me. A tea candle, which can be utilized to start a fire, also used to heat up a small shelter, and then we have some quick tinder tabs, and then char cloth material so it can spark onto these to get a, a flame going. This just gives me some options. Um, you can always add more stuff and have different types of fire making materials, but to me, those uh, those three items are very consistent, very predictable, very e easy to use in the field, have experience with them, and then the tin, um, of course, is a, just a great must-have for making extra char material. The only thing that um, I would add to it is a, a metal carabiner that has some um, ability to take some weight, not a cheap uh, gas station keychain, but this one actually can handle a little bit of a load. Um, that way you can use this uh, potentially for setting up a ridge line on a tarp or hanging gear off of your pack. Um, also, this is going to help with if I want to carry a water bottle. I can just hook this water bottle to my bag, and that way 
um, as I'm hiking, this is what I'm drinking out of. And then everything else that you see in the kit is for emergency use. So a lot of options that you can put in these kind of grab and go last ditch survival kits uh, and how you have them set up is really very personal and what you think is going to work best for you, items that you have, things that you're comfortable with. Um, but I like the whole concept of something that is very portable, um, something that can be utilized with other bags, larger backpacks, can go on trips, can be thrown in a vehicle, can be taken with you on a short hike, um, add your water bottle, and of course, items that you need to have on you, bandana, pocket knife, those are all things you're probably gonna be carrying anyway, but these are your backups. These are the things that are gonna um, help you out in the long run. So if you find this content useful, please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, leave a comment down below, let me know what you guys think. Um, also, if you are interested in supporting the channel, we have prepared Wanderer uh, PVC Velcro patches in the Big Cartel site as, long, as well as stickers and other patches. Um, there'll be a link down below for that. Some of these items that I'm showing in this video will be in the um, Amazon store and there'll be a link to that. And I also try to post a list of all this stuff um, in the description. So everything's in the description below. Make sure you check that out. And as always, thank you so much for watching my channel and we'll see you next time on The Prepared Wanderer.